All right, so a couple of days ago, we got the official results out of Wisconsin in what many people are calling the single most important election of 2023 that decided the makeup of their state Supreme Court that is obviously going to have massive implications for reasons that we are going to get into in this video. But first here, we have the results directly from Decision Desk HQ with Janet Protasiewicz just gonna call her Janet for now, winning overwhelmingly by over 10 percentage points against the uh, GOP-backed Daniel Kelly. So this honestly wasn't particularly close. It seems like a lot of people thought it was going to be much more uh, close than it actually ended up being. And one of the main reasons why it wasn't close, in addition to issues like abortion rights being at the forefront of this election, was also youth voter turnout. Surprise, surprise. Again, we've seen this over the last number of election cycles when young people show up to vote usually Republicans not very good news for them okay and so a little bit of details here on the youth uh, voter turnout they say here from next gen America young voters led historic turnout in Wisconsin Supreme Court election primary they say early data shows that Wisconsin's critical Supreme Court primary election Tuesday night was decided by a historic and overwhelming surge in youth voter turnout there is so much at stake in this race with implications for the future of abortion access and voting voting rights in Wisconsin, which is probably the single most, or at least it's up there in the country in terms of just having an outright rigged uh, state legislature map makeup and congressional map makeup where they basically just use these strategies of cracking and uh, breaking up some of these different districts and gerrymandering them so that it's essentially impossible for Democrats to ever win a majority, even if they get an overwhelming majority of the votes. And I'll show you a little bit of details there on that in a second, because it's just honestly mind-blowing that they have been able to get away with this for so long but again they point out abortion access voting rights some of the top issues here definitely abortion is something that is just totally blown back in the face of republicans i mean they have been working to overturn abortion rights in this country for literally decades they finally got what they wanted with the overturning of roe v wade and then it just blew up back in their face in the 2022 midterms which it was the single biggest issue at least for democratic voters and you know leading to that surge that basically prevented democrats from getting wiped out in the house and the senate obviously republicans did win the House, but it's a pretty small margin and it wasn't the red wave that they had been anticipating focusing their narrative on crime and inflation and all of that abortion is definitely an issue that is just going to keep coming back to uh, bite the Republican Party but they say that next gen America is proud of our work online and on the ground to contact and mobilize young people in this primary they say most importantly this primary result shows an unprecedented level of youth vote retention between elections in the Madison ward that contains the two largest first-year dorms young people demonstrate demonstrated a nearly eight times increase from 2019 in voter retention and uh, voter retention from a general to a spring primary and at one of the main polling locations for UW Madison freshmen over 500 votes were cast a major jump from 2019 when only 44 votes were cast at the same location okay so you get the main point there right young voters of course are the major thrust and this is another lesson for Democrats just broadly and also for you know voters in general obviously I don't tend to focus my commentary or my political ideology ideological framework or you know strategy for the left just purely on electoralism i think when you get to more localized elections especially like this supreme court election this does literally have major implications for millions and millions of people's uh people's lives directly so i think that these elections often have a way bigger outsized impact on people's day-to-day -day lives in some of the national or federal elections so it's kind of why it's important to actually show up when you get a chance like this and you're going to see why this was so important here in a second but again the other lesson there for Democrats is that maybe you should try your best to tap in to what young people actually want to see from your party in order to win elections, right? I mean, there's a reason why Bernie Sanders in both of the campaigns he uh, ran in in 2020, 2016, but especially in 2020, was getting upwards of like 80% of the youth vote. I mean, it's because we want to see parts of his agenda or left-wing economic populism enacted, right? We want to address climate change in a bold and meaningful way, right? We want to have that at least bare minimum $15 minimum wage 
wage. We want to have universal health care, Medicare for all, etc. All of these top key policy priorities, uh, including abortion rights and voting rights and all of that good stuff, that is all what is going to energize young people. So Democrats, if you weren't in the pocket of many corporations and uh, you know the billionaire class, maybe you could take a lesson from that and actually lean into some of the more so-called radical aspects of your own coalition. But um, another just uh, article here that was put out by Newsweek, just in terms of like why this was so important for a number of different issues, abortion rights, voting access, all of that stuff. They say here from Newsweek, Democrats' colossal triumph in Wisconsin redraws the electoral map. So what are they talking about here? They say a Democratic victory in the race to fill a seat on the Wisconsin Supreme Court could have major ramifications for the state and for the whole country after Milwaukee County Circuit Judge Janet triumphed on Tuesday. They say that victory could have a profound effect on the state as well as national politics. And they say that Janet's addition to the court will now give it an effective 4-3 liberal majority. This could open the way to challenges to electoral maps for the U.S. House of Representatives, which currently favors Republicans. Now, keep in mind, again, Republicans led by Kevin McCarthy in the House, they only have like, what, a four or so vote lead in the House, depending on how many members are actually showing up on any given day. Okay, so this could like literally change the makeup of the House of Representatives, depending on how they decide to go about redrawing these maps. And I think it's like right now, they have roughly like six out of the eight congressional seats for the House of Representatives within Wisconsin, even though, again, it is basically a purple swing state. I mean, it's like 50-50 whether Democrats or Republicans could win the uh, popular vote in any given election cycle. And yet, Republicans have the overwhelming majority of the seats of the representation because of how they have gerrymandered those maps. So that could have a direct impact on the politics that we are currently seeing right now. So they give a little bit more details on that here, saying that Janet's election also has implications for abortion rights in Wisconsin. The court is expected to make a decision soon on whether to uphold the state's 1849 ban on abortion. Okay, this is the strategy that Wisconsin Republicans were using to effectively ban abortion in the state of Wisconsin, is appealing to an 1849 ban. OK, that's how serious they are about this. All right. But they say the new liberal majority could also prove crucial in dealing with any potential challenges to the 2024 presidential election results in Wisconsin. I mean, keep in mind, Trump was going around to all of these various states trying to get one state or one Supreme Court to actually validate his bullshit claims about election fraud. Wisconsin was one of the states that was actually the closest to giving him one of those victories. And uh, the fact that it's now not going to be a conservative led led court means that in 2024, you know, you have a little bit more protection there in terms of whether or not they would to try to uh, bring forth some of those uh, legal challenges as well to those election results. But they say in 2020, a majority of the justices refused to hear then President Donald Trump's challenge to the election, but three conservative justices on the seven member court wanted to take up the case. And I think like the one who disagreed with them that led to this not being taken up um, was just a guy who was like disagreeing on the procedural nation, na uh, nature of how the they brought this case and not like on the principle of, you know, trying to help facilitate overthrowing the, uh, you know, democratic will of the American people. So it was much closer than I think some people may realize. And that's why, again, this has implications beyond just abortion rights and, uh, you know, voting rights directly with the gerrymandering, but also in, you know, national elections as well. So just to give you more perspective in terms of how absolutely gerrymandered and completely fucked Wisconsin's uh, state maps are. So here from uh, the gerrymandering project, basically from Princeton. They say Wisconsin, their 2021 state assembly plan has a grade of an F for partisan fairness, a grade of an F. And you can go and look at the, uh, you know, various counties and how they have broken up some of the larger cities here and tried to basically like this is an example here, just like isolate Democrats into this tiny district here, then pull some of them off in these other surrounding districts that are Republican. And you can get into more details in terms of that. But I'll show you what the actual result is from that. So they say here from uh, NBC News, Democrats, and this is from a couple years ago, right? Democrats also won the state assembly popular vote. 54% to 46%. So they won the popular vote, right, by almost 10%. It was by 8% margin is, you know, the, the representation between Democrats and Republicans in this election cycle. But they say you wouldn't know it by the resulting representation, where the GOP maintained 64% of assembly seats with Democrats holding just 36 percent. I mean, it's it's just brazenly undemocratic. There is there's no other way to describe this. It's completely ridiculous, right? 54 percent of the vote share 
and you get barely over a third of the actual representation, I mean, that's not democracy. It's not even anything remotely resembling democracy. This is just, you know, you want to talk about rigging elections, right? As Republicans frequently like, you know, to uh, call things like, uh, you know, mail-in ballots or just basic like expansions and the actual right to vote for the American people, making it easy uh, for people to illegally go out and vote. They'll call that vote rigging. But then when it comes to gerrymandering your state legislature to the point where it's essentially impossible for Democrats to ever win a majority of the uh, state seats, even if they win a majority of the votes, somehow that's not rigging elections. I mean, again, this is what you would actually be focused on if you cared about having some sort of like election integrity, if you want to call it that. But now I want to get to this aspect of it because this is the guy who ended up losing. Okay. Daniel Kelly, this speech that he gave basically conceding, I guess, even though he didn't really concede because of the bullshit justification he's going to give here. I mean, this was just an absolutely wild example of like, you know, being a sore loser and not being able to actually accept reality as it is. So let's just go ahead and watch a little bit of this. And it brings me no joy to say this. I wish that in a circumstance like this, I would be able to concede to a worthy opponent. But I do not have a worthy opponent to which I can concede. This was the most deeply deceitful, dishonorable, despicable campaign I have ever seen run for the courts. It was truly beneath contempt. Okay, so he's crying, he's coping and seething and shitting his pants and all of that good stuff. I mean, have you ever seen more loser bullshit than this? I mean, it's honestly pathetic, dude. You lost. We just saw the results. I mean, it wasn't even close, right? It's not as if this was like, you know, a 1% margin of victory and, oh, if she hadn't pulled those dirty tricks on me, then maybe I would have won. No, it just wasn't even close because people were looking at what you stand for, what she stood for, and they decided to vote against you or for her. That's just the reality of what it is. You can and take that on the chin and actually stand up and like be a real you know man and actually uh, you know push forward and uh, just move on with your life but instead he's choosing to just be the biggest sore loser in the country right now and this is another hilarious aspect of it right because he's talking about how unfair the election was and how it was you know there, there were smears that were thrown at him and how this was a disgusting you know contempt for the judicial process and all of that stuff well here just an, as an example as pointed out by a uh, Wislaw journal they say Wisconsin TV stations had to pull false and harassing Supreme Court candidate Kelly's ads. Okay, so you're talking about how Janet was using dirty tactics to, I guess, lie about you or smear you, which I haven't seen any actual evidence of. Meanwhile, these these uh, TV stations are having to literally pull your advertisements because they're just brazenly false and harassing the other candidate. I mean, this almost never happens in elections like this, where you have TV stations pulling the advertisements. I mean, you can get away with basically anything when it comes to U.S. elections. I mean, borderline, like straight up, you know, uh, uh, lies about the other candidate, but apparently his went over the line. Okay, so that's who he actually was as a person. And now we get to this aspect of it, which is where we basically currently stand. So she has been elected, and before she's even done anything within the office, they're already saying that they're going to try to impeach her. Impeach her for what? Who the fuck knows? Because again, she hasn't even done anything yet. So this is the Republican Party for you, right? You have state legislatures that are uh, completely uh, gerrymandered to oblivion to the point where it, you can't even remotely call it a, a democracy. You have, uh, you know, these elections that are taking place where when your guy loses, he says it was unfair and there were smear campaigns against me and I can't concede because they're not deserving of uh, me conceding to them. Even though it doesn't matter, you can go cry and shit your pants all you want. It's not going to change the results of the election. And then once they lose and the Democrat or the liberal takes this position, they turn around and they threaten to impeach them. Them. I mean, it's just a complete shit show of a party, not to mention the ongoing restrictions on actual voting rights for people to participate in these elections. And um, also, you know, not to mention some of the uh, aspects with the abortion bans, which are also incredibly unpopular and believe it or not, are probably the main reason why you guys lost this election in the first place. So it's like they're never going to actually, you know, uh, learn their lessons from these types of elections. But clearly, if, there were, if you're the Republican Party, you got to do some uh, inner thinking in terms of uh, how you were 
are going to uh, change strategies for the future. I mean, I just saw a clip from Fox News yesterday where uh, they were basically talking about how, oh, the Republican Party is struggling to get the youth vote. And it's like, no shit, you guys are simply not doing things that are in our best interest. Not to say that Democrats are even remotely close to being perfect, but it's like you guys are actively hostile to young people. You're constantly calling us these, you know, woke, uh, neo-Marxist, you know, uh, lazy pieces of shit, right? And then you're, you're not tackling some of the biggest issues that we actually want to be tackled, right? You're basically dooming our future by your insistence on doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on fossil fuel usages and not taking climate change seriously. It's like, yeah, no shit you're not getting the youth vote. No shit that normies are starting to turn against you when all you fucking talk about on a daily basis is just like trans people being a threat to society and trying to restrict a access to abortion rights. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's so obvious why Republicans have been struggling in some of these high profile elections. They did it to themselves. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying things.